Okay, so we were talking about how to practice today, and uh, I was saying, well, you know, what's good is just play a tune, or like you take a song, could be anything, and uh, it's usually something that you already kind of have in your head is another, I would say, or something you're really studying, like a new song that you just are know inside out, and... Uh, you can uh, use that as like a laboratory to just try different ideas of soloing, scales, chords, anything. But really, you're just playing the song, too. Like, you can just kind of dissect it and, like, just fiddle with it. And sometimes, you know, do just reduce it to minimal or other times, you know, just place scale patterns over it. And that's the important point here, and this takes a little bit of a philosophical turn because you're not, even if, like, we're going to play People Get Ready because Kevin suggested it, and uh, and it's like, ah, oh, yeah, that's a perfect thing to use because it's, it's a good song. And also, it's just, it's right, dee, 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 like, it's available. And that's kind of the main thing is this is... This is not silly. This is actually like, and it's hard to get to this in the lesson, is you've got to be playing along to your head. And, and you don't have to play the exact same thing in your head. It can just be like if we're in C. Just the bass line, just a basic rhythm track that's flung. And you're just kind of like playing along to a, some generic rhythm track of it. Or you can hear... And that, like, singing along with having that as a contour when you're soloing. And you can embellish. So that's what we're going to explore, but also you just need to have the chords C, A minor, to the F, back to C. So it's C, A minor, F, C, one, six, four, one. And of course, that's another thing you can change. You can reharmonize stuff or play it atonally and... Uh, and that, oh yeah, that's what I was saying. These are, it's a classic song, but ultimately you're not playing it for a recording here or playing it at a show that's a Curtis t tribute to Curtis Mayfield. You're, you're just in the privacy of your own home. So feel free to, you can overplay it. You can shove stuff in it. You can murderize it. It's just there as a, your demented little tool to give you... It, it, humor and amusement and tear that thing apart so we got c a m c then it repeats and i think the original is in d flat then you get a third one and then it goes to the three Loop that a couple times. F to C. 
So you got uh, the melody. So you can see the chord notes are in the, the melody's in the chord, and you just kind of find it in there. In this case, it's on that string. But that's your job. You know, don't, I'm not gonna teach where it is, just find it. And then of course, in the open position, you can do all kinds of little improvisation. Of the pentatonic variety. Next thing is to just keep it going, like keep the form going. And that's like the whole fun of this type of practice, I think. It's like, um, we're gonna throw a G in there. Um, yeah, just see how long you can keep the, uh, t the badminton birdie in the air, you know? Just uh, praise the Lord. And at the end, there's a little Praise the Lord, which is never bad, right? You're not, um, you're not a heartless robot. You're a guitar player and uh, a great one. So uh, that's this low zone. And this position I'm doing you can do phrases of four that E minor just keeps sneaking up on me and when you're up here it's you could do this Second inversion, C triad, A minor, first regular, root third fifth, four chord F, third root, third fifth root, first inverted, and then your. Now this is nice to play up here, yeah. just up here, you know, like an A minor shape, and then your D minor, and then praise the Lord. So up here, it's uh, where rhythm meets lead, you know? And there you can start with just that. So yeah, um, so yeah, pentatonic position, it's old, it's our old buddy here. Oh. It's our old buddy, but I've, I've, I'm out of touch with him. Um, train is coming. So if you got groups of four, now, that's the thing about the tempo of this song. It's like real slow. So you're changing every two beats. Get a 
up to this guy. <laughs> oh, that's tasty. So this is like, you know, the top of that bar chord, or F chord, or root third fifth. You can have a thing there. Maybe it's my intonation. Um, so C, A minor, F, C. And then probably repeat that, and then just go like, end here. Okay, I'm getting sloppy here. So, uh, yeah, you can stitch all these together, like especially uh, <laughs> this one is my favorite right now. In this song, we've got the F chord. Like if you expand the whole thing, it's like a C chord being moved up here. If you don't know that, man, take some time to make friends with that. That is just a great position. A lot of good stuff you can do with it. And uh, it's always a nice option. It's a very mellow sounding chord. And uh, you can play a pentatonic. So it's really the same notes as your pentatonic minor A slash C major. But uh, now you got an F in there instead. So it's like you can really expand it if you want it, but you don't have that much time on it. But my point was really the difference is you've got the four, the F in it if we're in C. So, uh, and the, that's what the pentatonic minor don't have. And you could say, well, it's all part of a major scale, which it is, you know. And uh, put the seventh in. Well, maybe not. I'll try to... Here's like a goal I'll work in. Seven's a really, it's a little bit too uh, whiny or something for this, uh, this tune. Uh, um, it's for the people, not for the man. No, the major seven's not the man. So, um, yeah, like for example, people do, or like, So there I was just running these four noters and trying to like get a perpetual motion machine going. And I'm not saying this is what, that's the problem. You wouldn't go play that on the actual song. You're just using this as a thing to fuck around with and try different ideas and see how long, the main fun I think is to see how long you can keep the form going without, uh, you know, repeating yourself you know you want to be experimenting trying different things and be honest you know you know where i saw that I, in the lesson I, it was actually that pat metheny video and i don't listen to pat metheny's music too much but once in a while i'll watch him play stuff and just be like whoa yikes i forgot <laughs> he's like the wayne gretzky of guitar like um to the level of excellence and but there is a video of him uh, giving a lesson to some poor guy and he's just shitting on the guy so brutally. It's really, that's my favorite 
Pat Metheny thing, just l listening to him kind of rip. But he's being really helpful in a way. Like, he's really being honest with the guy. Like, he's like, your rhythm is shit. Everything is, you gotta have the rhythm. And, but one of the things he says is you gotta play honestly. And I think, I, as soon as he said that, I was like, right on, man. Yeah, that's what it is. Like, and uh, you can see this, because I call them dog and pony show players. Like, they they play a worked out routine. I mean, I love it too. Like, even say someone I love, like Chet Atkins, you know, putting those records on. I love him just hearing that, that thing. But uh, really, it's like a rehearsed act that is being done perfectly. And uh, so it's a bit of a, you know, but it's better to just get on there and, you know, if you don't know the song very well, then don't feel like you got to just get by with them you know play with the thumb even like You know who's really good for that is uh, John Schofield. The um, kind of like when he's doing his first choruses, he's just kind of scratchy and he's not. He's really trying to find like an honest foothold in the song, and then, and then he can build from that. I keep missing the uh, I'm guilty of. <laughs> oh, I'm branching out into this. Oh, that's the other thing. Um, the sliding guy. one of those chords can have a one of these off of it and that's a bit of a big can of worms we haven't covered that in the class I'll just go for it so you've got one two three five most people have already played this pattern but you know try to frame it with chords C a minor F, C, C, you know, just like find the note, and it's always like this do re mi slidey thing. Except for on the minor, it starts on there, and then the do re mi. To do that, what you gotta do is think bass note wise, like. So I'm going like C, A minor, F, C. So, uh, oh, this has rambled on much too long, but try to play in that way and think of as many different ways in and out of it as you can. But it's good also to have a cu couple of these. Though I know if I'm interested in a certain song or form, I'll stick on it until I get sick of it and then 
bounce over to something else. But I think lately I was reflecting, I want to have more variety in my practice, my laboratory pieces. And because I'm just, I'm really doing a lot of autumn leaves, <laughs> which is like, but it's a really good, it's just a, because it has this, ba, dee, da, dee, da, dee, da, that pattern. Like it's really fun pattern, but uh, it gets st it's these. That's the problem. These are like earworms, I guess, and you're just practicing on top of an earworm, and uh, and that can be like annoying to your family. So you can mix it up. That's probably a smart strategy. But also looking in any direction, you know, TV show themes. Like I was doing WKRP the other day. <laughs> so you can just like find something simple that's the other thing simple already in your head and just try to get it out on the guitar and it can be fun to do something that's just barely in your head like the other day I was doing uh, Yeah, you wouldn't want to watch me do it, but you get started <laughs> on something like that, honestly, you know, like, you don't, if you're rough and scratchy, just crunch through that, and and you'll find little s footholds and work your way through it, but the key thing is you're working from your head, not from, uh, not from the page or from a recording even, but you got to listen to recordings, obviously, to get them on your head. And uh, so you could, like, say you're trying to learn a new tune, listen to a recording of it a million times first, and that'll give you the advantage. But it's all that type of thing. Okay, man, I could talk about this for another hour, man. It's such an interesting topic. And 12-bar uh, blues. Uh, That's a whole other lesson, but just getting one of those. I like this first thing in the morning because it's like there's a certain irony to it. <laughs> um, there really is. You're just kind of like hungover playing the blues. Um, and uh, gradually waking yourself up. That's another thing I... I like to play as soon as I wa I'm awake. Like it, I almost play myself awake in the morning. It's like your old little friend is helping you wake up. But sometimes I can't. I don't get to do that, and I can be very cranky. Okay, later, skaters.